Hey, future respiratory therapist, I got a lesson for you here on acid base balance. And what we're talking about here is just very simplistic, basic acid base balance interpretation. Now, when we say acid base balance interpretation, what we're really talking about is ABG interpretation. And you've got to understand what effect CO2 has on pH and what bicarb effect has on pH. But before we do that, you got to understand what pH means. And so what I have on the board here for you is, is perfect harmony. So I have 7.40 perfect pH, 40 CO2, perfect CO2, and 24 is our perfect bicarb. Okay, now I'm going to go through these again with you. I'm going to give you our normal ranges. You're going to have to write these down yourself because I'm not writing them down for you. Okay, they'll be incorporated, but I'm not writing them down as normal seven, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you got to write these down. So <clears throat> when we talk about normal pH, we're talking about 740 as being absolutely normal. Now, anything greater than 7.40 would be an alkalosis. Now, when I say really greater than 740, really what I'm talking about is greater than 7.45, okay? And then anything less than 740 puts us in a state of acidosis. And when I say acidosis, I'm really saying anything less than 7.35. 735 to 745. That's really our normal range for our pH. I'm not saying you never panic if it's not in that range, but I'm saying usually a pH of 7.35 to a pH of 7.45 is typically something that you're okay with. Now I'm going to follow this video up with respiratory disturbances and metabolic disturbances specifically because you can have somebody at a 7.35 or a 7.36 that you recognize as going into a respiratory acidosis and you got to be able to pick up on that okay so I'm not telling you do not take away from this video that 735 is okay don't worry about my patient I'm not saying that I'm saying typically 735 to 745 is normal anything greater than 745 is an alkalosis anything less than 7.35 is an acidosis okay now what I want you to understand is as we move down here you need to understand that changes in acids will shift the pH as well as changes in base or buffering system will alter the pH your job is to know what effect each of these numbers <clears throat> the CO2 or the carbon dioxide or the bicarb, what effect they have on pH. Okay, so here we go. CO2 will push pH in the opposite direction. Okay, you with me? CO2 pushes away, it pushes pH in the opposite direction. So assuming your bicarb stays normal, that is so key. Assuming your bicarb stays normal, then an increase in your CO2 will cause your patient to become acidotic or into a state of acidosis. Okay? The exact opposite is true if your CO2 goes down. Okay, if your CO2 goes down, remember your bicarb staying normal. CO2 goes down, it will push your body into a state of alkalosis. Okay, so remember CO2 pushes the pH in the opposite direction. Now, let's talk about bicarb. Bicarb is your buffering system. It buffers acids. So if you lose bicarb or you gain bicarb, you will either have an excess of, 
of of alkalosis or you'll push your body into a state where there's too much pH because you don't have enough buffering system. Okay? Does that make sense? So, let's first of all talk about what happens if you lose bicarb. If bicarb goes down. Now, this is under the assumption that CO2 stays normal. This is just an overview of what happens if one changes and the other doesn't. Okay? So, in this case, your bicarb is going to go down. It'll create a state of acidosis. If your bicarb goes up, it'll create a state of alkalosis. So what you need to remember here is that bicarbonate or bicarb pulls pH in the same direction. If, if bicarb goes up, it pulls pH up. If bicarb goes down, it pulls pH down. Okay. Now, I didn't go into normal values here, but I'm going to recap that real quick. Let's go back to CO2 for just a second. If CO2 goes up, and when we say up, we're talking about greater than 45. And if we talk about CO2 going down to create an alkalosis, we're typically talking about a CO2 less than 35. So your normal your normal CO2 or carbon dioxide in arterial blood is typically 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. If it's in that range, then you're typically, and you have a normal bicarb, then you're typically going to have a normal pH. As CO2 climbs greater than 45, you will become acidos acidotic or in a state of acidosis. As your patient hyperventilates and become and pushes the CO2 less than 35, you will find yourself in a state of alkalosis. Now, I told you bicarb normal is 24. So if bicarb goes down from 24, then you'll find yourself in a state of acidosis. Now the normal for bicarb is 22. So as it falls less than 22, you'll become acidotic. And on the other side, if it becomes greater than 26, you'll find yourself in a state of alkalosis. Remember, that's assuming your CO2 stays at 40. Okay. The key from this video is this. Remember that CO2 pushes pH in the opposite direction. Bicarb pulls pH in the same direction. Okay? It's really as simple as that. Now I'm going to follow this up with some videos that talk about respiratory disturbances. And I'm going to follow them up with some videos that talk about metabolic disturbances. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Give me some questions, some comments uh, below. And at the end of the day, I hope you have a good day as usual. And go be great.